am the queen of the concrete jungle. Concrete jungle, concrete lion of the scene. It's dangerous. Oh, it's a rhythm that changed music forever. I'm the queen of the concrete jungle. From the mellow sound of roots reggae to the frenetic beat of dancehall. Reggae has put this tiny island at the centre of the music world. The culture of reggae is really the culture of Jamaica, but really reggae started in the inner city of Kingston, the concrete jungle. Yeah, man, bless up, man. Yeah. A jungle that raised Jamaica's favourite son. Yes, I, Bob Marley is a special one. He's a prophet. This is where reggae began, in the tough slums of Kingston. And it became a soundtrack of social justice, with songs calling for equality and peace, and of course, one love. But along the way, something bad happened. News spread that a gay man had sought refuge in a clothing store. It's a story of one love. It just needed to change. One hate. We condemn the act of being a homosexual. And one hope. It's Bob Marley's 72nd birthday, and Kingston's throwing a party. The musical icon may have died of melanoma 36 years ago, but Jamaica likes to keep his spirit alive. Yes, bring our music across the world. So yeah, he was one of the greatest. He inspires us. He, he teaches us more about each other. He teaches us to love, respect each other, and understand life. Bob is the king of everything. Every year, his birthday anniversary kicks off four days of national celebrations. The music he helped popularise in the 1970s not only put this tiny country at the centre of global culture, it gave a voice to the poor. Yeah, welcome to Jamaica. For 300 years, Spanish and British rulers brought slaves to this Caribbean island to work the sugar plantations. Reggae, with its African-inspired beat and politically charged lyrics, called on people to be their own masters. He's become like a representative of, of the struggle, of climbing, of, you know, of moving up, coming into your own, rebelling, rage against the machine. He's become kind of like that face, that guy, you know, the soundtrack of the, the revolution, the rebellion. Globally, the message of reggae has been consciousness raising, chanting down oppression. Reggae became a rhythm of resistance, to quote Bob Marley. Marley's best known song, One Love, had a simple plea, let's get together and feel all right. It struck a chord in a community plagued by crime and violence. It can be tough. It can be very tough. There's, I mean, that's the. I mean, that's the beauty of I think Kingston and Jamaica. There's so many 
contradictions to Jamaica that I think, you know, I mean, it leads to a lot of art, you know, it's perfect for artists or it's the perfect place for inspiration, you know what I mean? People, people can be the, we can, as Jamaicans, we can be the most friendly set of people, but if we feel disrespected enough, we'll kill you. Those contradictions soon tested the message of peace. Any night of the week, Sanjay Ramanand can go to sound system parties blaring a different reggae rhythm. It's called dancehall. And it's frenetic, aggressive and unashamedly sexual. The culture of dancehall is one of those things you kind of really have to experience. You know, dancehall culture is very loud and it is very whatever you are. It's people not afraid to be in themselves. It's people, you know what I mean, expressing their truth, whether it's good, bad or ugly. It's vibrant, it's loud, it's in your face and uh, it's literal. If it's a violent song being played, you'll see gunshots being like mimic in the air. You know, what I mean, if it's a if it's that type, a certain type of song, you'll see simulated sex going on. It's art, you know, and like most art is not necessarily good or bad. It's just a reflection of people's reality. When it exploded onto the global music scene in the 1990s. Part of it reflected one of the most confronting aspects of life here, a violent, even murderous homophobia. It's like boom, bye, bye, in a body boy aid. Who why not promote no nasty man, them are feed dead. Songs like Boom Bye Bye, performed by the reggae star Buju Banton, openly called for gay men to be shot or incinerated. In the late night, mid to late nineties, there really emerged this um, overtly aggressive lyric, and particularly aimed at um, the LGBT community. Dane Lewis heads Jamaica's only LGBT rights group, J Flag, which operates from an unmarked office in a suburb of Kingston. They helped organise an international boycott of what became known as murder music. A number of tunes just, you know, pretty violent and if you really review the kinds of ways in which they were um, sort of seeking out the LGBT community and speaking out against the LGBT community. Um, and that, that ignited a murder music campaign, which we partnered with um, two other organizations. Um, and that sort of took on a life of its own. A spate of gay hate crimes, including murder, increased the international attention. Images like these went viral, and US and European promoters came under intense pressure to drop any artists promoting homophobic violence. People couldn't travel and they didn't get, you know, contracts because they were just, um, you know, banned because of the um, homosexual lobby that rightly said we don't want murder music. Gay rights aren't much of a talking point in the working class of Kingston. Life is tough and fiercely competitive. With youth unemployment running as high as 30%. Homophobia still runs deep. You find that just by asking the question, can men be with men? In the beginning, the Bible says, you go to a, a man, you should be stoned. Yeah, yeah. A woman and a man, you, you multiply, you know what I mean? We, we need kids. So, I mean... Man to woman and woman to man. There's no way you can get an enjoyment from a man as what you get from a woman. I don't see that necessary. So I don't have anything to say on that topic. It's not right. 
homosexuals in Jamaica, nah, God, no. Mm -mm. mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to picture it. That shouldn't be happening. That should be a law that should be enforced not to be happening. Actually, there is a law. Emancipation Park commemorates the end of slavery and Jamaica's 1962 independence from Britain. But one group was never liberated. Jamaica kept the British prohibition on male-to-male -male relations. Today, the crime of sodomy is still punishable by 10 years prison with hard labour. It means anyone attacked for being gay has to think twice about reporting it to police. The law really hangs over our heads just as a big shadow. Um, it, it, as one colleague framed it, makes us all un unapprehended criminals. Social class has a lot to do with how um, people navigate life generally. So imagine putting your LGBT status on top of that um, also certainly makes it more difficult about how you navigate certain spaces. The hardest place of all is on society's fringe. My name is Shaquille. I call myself Abi Abi. I'm 19 years old. I end up on the street because of my lifestyle. Person in my community tried to hurt me. Some um, came to rush me with guns and stuff. And so I'm threatening of my life, I run away. And then I end up in the gully. Shaquille is called a gully queen, one of many driven from their homes when they declared their difference. My family is really mad at me now. Yeah. Batman, Fagot, Fish, Sadamite, and the list goes on. It's terrible because the homeless gays in Jamaica don't have nowhere to go. Jamaica people are so homophobic and that won't change. Yeah. Once them know you're yeah, man, them do all manner of evil things. In 2006, Time magazine posed the question, is Jamaica the most homophobic place on earth? The people who spread homophobic messages don't represent all of Jamaica. They don't represent half of Jamaica. So, you know, we've never been that bad. Dancehall and roots reggae artist Tanya Stevens was one of the first artists to challenge her own industry. Her single, Do You Still Care, was a lone call for tolerance. The, the thing is, doing Do You Still Care was just a reflection of where my mind was at at the time, thinking I had become a part of many conversations which led me to realise just how bad the, the, the problem could grow to be. And, and I felt like there needed to be different voices. Do you still care what your friends want to think if they see you hanging out with a queer? Tell me, why can't you accept me as I am, just the way I am? But even she was caught up in the international boycott. I've had one show cancelled because another artist was on it and he, he wasn't allowed to play. And, and stuff like that, I've had to reshape the way I book. I've had to refuse shows with certain artists, which it made me boycott fellow artists who have, some of them, they have some good messages too. The music industry is one of Jamaica's biggest economic assets and it started paying a heavy price for the actions of a few. Market pressure eventually forced artists like Beanie Man to publicly apologise for offensive lyrics. Let me make this clear and straight. I have nothing against no one, including gay and lesbian people. Do not fight against me for some song that I sing 20 years ago. The same artists that used to go on stage and say those things, they're not saying them on stage anymore. You know what I mean? Corporate companies are, 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 are signing them to do shows and they have to sign contracts that say, hey, we will not sing any uh, homophobic lyrics or we won't. Really. So, there, and I mean, and I think artists are a little bit more open to, 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 to that reality now, like, you know what I mean? Tanya Stevens believes musicians weren't the real culprits, 
She blames Christians who taught them from childhood that gays were evil. The message coming from the church, for example, has actually empowered them, has taught them to think and speak like this. And it's unfair that dancehall suffered and reggae suffered and not the church, because that's where it started from. The church has a big influence, because all of these DJs went to Sunday school. So dancehall DJs feel that they're doing something quite righteous when they chant down homosexuality. Jamaica boasts the world's largest number of churches for its population. Almost every street corner has a place of worship. They can be a refuge from the problems of poverty and violence. Jamaica suffers the world's sixth highest murder rate. But the fastest growing churches, evangelical and Pentecostalist, are a cold refuge for the LGBT community. To, to really um, say kill them because um, kill them is a, is a human being as well, it's a human being. Pastor Randolph Samuels runs the Equator Faith Mission Church in the centre of Kingston. We as a Christian, we don't hate, but you know, we, we um, are against the behaviour of being a homosexual. The behaviour, the, the act is wrong. But the persons can we can take counsel and they can change their behaviors. Jamaica has another big religion that people can turn to, Rastafari. Only one in ten Jamaicans follow it, but its influence is everywhere. Rastafarians believe black Africans are God's true chosen people. The dreadlocked Rastas worship ganja as a sacred herb and adhere to a strict alternative lifestyle. The drumming of their ceremonies, called Naya Bingi, gave reggae its distinctive beat. That's right! Music for Rastafarian is Naya Bingi. Yes, I. This is the ancient order, the one, two. But they too believe it's a sin for a man to lie with a man. It is that a precious item, don't it? No, sir, no. because the Bible, in the beginning, mm. the Bible placed Adam and Eve. And it says, so was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. No man to man, no woman to woman. King and queen. See, there's love that I'm feeling in my heart. Well, it's undiluted, yeah, and it's concentrated. For some Jamaicans, music studios are just as sacred as any church. Here in Montego Bay, a new track is being recorded with a powerful message. Spread love, spread it all over the world. Spread to every boy, every girl. 
Spread it all over the world. My music is real roots music, roots reggae. My music is world music. So yeah, it feels like heaven. And I want to make it contagious. The core of the music is always reggae. Always. That check it, check, check, check. <laughs> and if you want to win, you got to put up a fight. Put up a fight. Hey. Cause only the strongest of the strong will survive. Atana, known as the strong one, is one of Jamaica's current success stories. She follows Rastafarian teachings, except when it comes to judging people on their sexuality. Rastafari is love, togetherness, oneness, unity, unconditional love, um, fighting for the rights of the people, um, for the poor, the sick, the elderly, the needy. Um, that's what Rasta is about, loving and caring and sharing. You can't run it out and get it out with no fire in you your eyes. And if you want to get to Zion, you need a will, you need a drive. Everyone have a right to decide his own destiny. Bob Marley even put it in a song. Right? That's a serious statement. It needs to be followed. All judgment needs to be left up to the most high. Them can't stop the way I feel for you, my lovers, no boundary. I think that the younger generation now has decided, okay, I'm just gonna be myself. I've I have I have many gay friends and I know their personality. I'm not saying that it's for everybody because everybody's not as strong as they are. But they're all right. They're not, they are not worried. I have confidence, I have faith, and I know they'll be all right. The loving now we are doing, we need us to jump. Making bandung the wicked with it, living fire. The rod of correction will give us direction away from the Eden and bless us, us with children. children. Them can't stop the way I feel for you, my lovers. Yeah, and them can't pull it away. I feel I fight for you and you fight for me. Them can't stop the way. Them wish and them hope and them bright and them pray. Back in Kingston at Big Yard Studio, a very different sound is going down. Ready for the next part? Artists like Sanjay and dancer Shelly Belly are riding dance hall's second coming. Dancing is extremely important to the sound because as you notice, the whole genre starts with dance, <laughs> you know what I mean? The, whole, the genre was named after a space where you could dance. There's a reflective side of it as well too, you know what I mean? And there's, a, there's a very socially conscious side of it as well too, but you know what I mean? You can't dance hall, you can't have dance hall without dancing. This time the boom is much bigger and like its reggae forebears, is influencing music around the globe. The sounds and dance moves of Kingston streets are moving on from a controversial past. Society is definitely changing here, there's no question. And it, I mean, it has a lot to do with te technology as well, too. We're exposed to things now. You can go on YouTube and you can see a gay person talking and you can, you can, you can, you can, you can even identify with some things that they're saying. 
you have more and more people that's been feeling more comfortable and coming out and saying it. And I think the more that happens is the more people will realize that, hey, they are normal. You know what I mean? It's just that we, we're not there yet. You know, there's still a lot of people that's afraid to, you know what I mean? The ones that are coming out in Jamaica now are the ones that are just like, Fuck you, I'm gay. Fire! You're not free to come on a leather shot. Belly at the devil shot. Next up like next up. Y'all are using a brain. What's your name? What's the head of that? But for now, few people in dance hall will admit to being gay. Dance hall is such an organically powerful medium. So it's just a matter of time before we get start getting dance hall DJs who are gay who are going to sing about freedom. You feel oppressed as a black person, you sing about it. You feel oppressed as a gay person, you're gonna have to sing about it. And people are going to accept that your voice is legitimate. It's authentically Jamaican. A few days after Bob Marley's birthday, the celebrations are showing no sign of slowing down. Even the Prime Minister has come to pay his respects. So let's, let's just use that as a background. Very good. Can I get your thoughts on today and the festival of Bob Marley and his significance for Jamaica? You know, Bob Marley is a national treasure for Jamaica, but not just for Jamaica, for the world. Uh, the downtrodden all over the world have used his poetry and his words to inspire change and change for the better. You still have the anti-sodomy laws here. Is there any prospect of repealing them? Well, it's a process. Um, and like all countries, all democratic countries, that process is engaged. And the discussion is going on, the debate is going on, it is evolving. Um, and Jamaica will find its own level. Do you and personally support repealing the laws? That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're optimistic. We know that change can happen. We've seen the shift over time and we know that it's possible. I think at the heart of Jamaican people, is that one love. There is a, a respect for the individual. Our differences can be celebrated. But yes, I mean, who is going to make the change for future generations? And it is the young people of today. I don't think there will ever come a time when people don't have to stand up for their rights everywhere in the world. Reggae has always been a force for social change and it continues to be, and it will always be. You know, no matter how much evolution it goes through, it remains the way we communicate with each other easiest. It brings us together. This is what gels us. Because no matter how much the divide or how wide the divide, reggae brings us all together.